Who we do? It's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And I thought today we would look at the uh, the Canon uh, G15, which is an ancient point and shoot. And how ancient do you ask? Well, let's find out. Let's go to the menu. Let's go to this uh, toolbox thing. It's got like a wrench and a hammer, so I guess that means toolbox. Let's go down to the date and time. Uh, Well, today's uh, 5-14-2022. Let's see how far back we got to go. Oh, it's 2020-12. So that means this thing's like 10 years old. So let's put this back. Okay. And that's how you tell any uh, used camera. Any used camera. Suppose like uh, you're in a garage sale or a thrift shop and you want to see how old the camera is, well that's what you do. Of course the battery has to work. I mean if the battery works that's a plus. You know, if it's a dead battery you don't know. Uh, and uh, let's shut this off for a minute. It's a proprietary battery. This battery lasts forever. Lasts forever. You charge it up, leave it in the camera, go use it a month from now, you could shoot all day, no problem. takes compact flash all magnesium body really excellent build quality really excellent clean looking build quality it has an optical viewfinder how about that it has a large LCD screen it's not non-articulated it is not a touch screen you got to use uh, all these buttons to surf through the menu. And if you're old school like me, then you don't mind at all. Uh, but uh, it's not waterproof, but it's rugged. So it's small enough to fit in most coat pockets. It's light enough to carry around on your neck all day. Uh, well, let's turn it back on again. So ISO. Look at that. 3200, 6400. 12,800 ISO. 1600 is very usable and 800 you can leave an 800 all day, chew all day. Alright, let's shut that off. Notice it's only a 5x zoom but it's 1.8 to 2.8 so that's pretty powerful. That means uh, under low lighting conditions you can still shoot pictures especially with those high ISO uh, readings. It has built in IS, optical IS now you say, uh, um, what is this? Boomer, everyone's favorite boomer. What is that? Well, I'll show you. If you press this button, this ring pops off. And this cap comes off. And it goes on sort of like that. Oh, locks in. Okay. So what this is, made in Japan, wow. This is a 1.4 multiplier, so it, it, it gives your zoom a little bit extra reach. Now the plastic tube, there's a, the lens comes separate, the plastic tube is an adapter. The plastic tube was 35 bucks. Now if you notice, uh, this says uh, DC58D. Well, let's go turn the camera on again. Go to menu. Converter TC DC 58E. Well, guess what? The D and the E are exactly the same. The D one was for the G14, which is discontinued. Even though I bought this one, the G15 was discontinued. So, uh, what you do is you put that there. And now remember, it, it, it's for the zoom. So, you keep zooming in until you get rid of the vignetting. And then, if you notice, you have just a little bit of zoom because too much zoom and then the corners get dark and that's no good so if you want just a little bit extra reach for something that's a little bit far away uh, or you want to get a little bit extra special close-up then you would use this thing so let's go to funk uh, menu uh, it's towards the bottom wasn't it 
Confirm. Yeah. None. Now I've left that turned on and nothing happened really. <laughs> as far as I could tell, uh, maybe it just sets, helps it set uh, something for the focal length because the EXIF does have the focal length data in it. So it's a rugged camera. Uh, I think they're available very cheap now because it's a 10-year-old camera. I don't know what model of G they are up to now uh, at all, but this thing takes outstanding photos. Uh, it, everything is customizable. Uh, uh, I'll show you. Function. Okay, uh, here. Menu settings. Menu uh, settings. Okay. So in custom color, I can set the contrast, which I have all the way down. Uh, sharpness, I have all the way up. Saturation, I have all the way up. But you know what? I think I'm going to kick that down one. And let's go back to uh, that. I'm just going to leave in the middle. Contrast, I'm going to go up one. Oh, sorry. Up one. Okay. Sharpness, okay. And then uh, function set, that locks it in. Okay. And then it does a panorama, but it won't stitch it in the camera. It'll take like a series of panoramas, and I think it keeps on going until you just stop. Like you just keep clicking, and it keeps on taking pictures. So you could have a panorama of two exposures, three exposures, or even a hundred, I guess. And then the uh, uh, the software uh, stitches it together afterwards, and so it's a two-step process. Although it has a built-in flash, it has a hot shoe. It's like if you want to put some sort of uh, aftermarket, more powerful flash on it, you can. It does movies. This is the movie button. The movie button works in all modes, although there is a special movie mode too. It has a super slow motion movie, uh, but it's very low res. Uh, usually I leave it on 720, but it also has a 1080 mode. 720 gives you the best, uh, you know, a file size um, and the best quality. It does a really, really good job of movies. Uh, I, 1080, uh, it will tend to use more power and suck your battery dry at 1080, but it's not a beast. I mean, you, you could shoot a couple of one-minute movies and still go shooting rather than have a dead battery. So it's got that going for it. But the 720 mode, uh, they call it the, let's see, what do they call it? Let's turn it on again. We'll go into movie mode. Uh, function set. Oh, uh, the, their 720 move they call 1280. And their 1080 mode they call uh, 1920. Well, I like the 1280 mode the best. I guess uh, 640, I guess, is good for instructional videos or say if you just want to capture sound. Then I go to 640 if I just want to capture sound. But uh, I like uh, the 1280 by 720 mode is really good. And look at how many minutes I got on this card. <laughs> yeah, we shoot for hours. Personally, I like uh, our old friend AV. That's what I go for. And I notice I have two of these cameras, and I have this oh, I have a. Uh, uh, Exposure bias on slightly minus for some reason, or the highlights get blown out. I don't know if they all do this, but uh, uh, I'd have to find out about that. But it's an outstanding, excellent camera. And remember, you want to buy it with a charger and at least an extra battery, like so you get two batteries. And uh, look at this, it's like brand how you, you know how many thousands of exposures I got in this? Look at the condition. You know, mostly I have it hung around my neck or I have a tiny little gadget bag to put it in. And uh, it's a really, really nice camera. A really, really nice camera. But this is the thing. When this camera was new, well, I bought it right when the G16 came out. So it was $100 off. I think I got it for five and change. It was $500. Now you figure uh, some of their entry level uh, DSLRs were like maybe $600. And uh, they weren't as feature rich at the time, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, so uh, it's an outstanding camera. I still use it a lot when I want to travel light. 
and uh, but it's still got all these cool modes full manual mode so you can play with it and get your perfect picture so if you ever see one of these even though they're 10 years old you know pick one up highly recommend it I don't know these are collector's items I don't know I, I've never seen any except for the one I got so there's that <laughs> the Canon G15 the uh, Canon G15 uses a SD card why would I think they'd use it? Uh, a compact flash. What a dope. Uh, the uh, flash is uh, configurable from plus two to minus two, which is good. So depending on your uh, ISO and how close or far you away from the subject, you can fine tune it. It has an ND filter, which under bright conditions allows you to use a uh, slower shutter speed if you want to get motion blur in some subjects. Um, what else does it do? Uh, most of the controls are fully configurable like um, uh, the color modes uh, whether it's uh, vibrant color, neutral color, custom color uh, you can configure each one of those modes. I like to have uh, for contrast, I like to have it one click up for minimum, and uh, for uh, saturation, I like to have it one click below maximum. That's just the way I roll. And I always jack the uh, sharpness up all the way, but uh, that's just my preference. You can do whatever you want. Uh, this camera is outstanding for having a camera with you to take pictures, and just the, the variability of uh, you know the range you could get is outstanding uh, look at this this is a uh, uh, crystals on the bench uh, and I was able to get uh, this picture and I was shooting under very cold conditions it had to be below freezing for me to get these pictures and it works really well in hot conditions humid conditions and in cold conditions it's not waterproof but uh, aside from that it's a very rugged and reliable camera um, I like to, in the morning uh, or in the afternoon, I like to set, set it to uh, uh, the sunlight setting for the white balance. And this way to capture that golden hour. Uh, of course, uh, other times, uh, if it's extremely cloudy out, then I put it on overcast. If I know I'm in the deep shade, then I put it in the shade. Otherwise, if I'm going to be in and out of different conditions, I usually leave it on automatic white balance which does a pretty decent job in adjusting the colors properly. It has a 5x zoom and it has uh, the capability of adding a, a 1.4 multiplier to it, which is good. I have the 1.4 multiplier. It's a uh, f1.8 to f2.8, so it'll do uh, low light situations in a pinch. And uh, 1600 is totally be usable for ISO reading. I've never really delved into anything higher from this because it's only a one inch chip and I didn't want to push it. Uh, well, you know, 321 used to be expensive, but now that would seem dirt cheap. Sometimes I drive by a place over and over again and I finally get around to driving by and taking a picture of it like a restaurant or uh, seasonal uh, decorations they put out in the towns I go to. I love fog. Some people say fog, I say fog. That's just a preference. And it's always uh, worth going back to the same place, uh, you know, every couple of weeks or months to see how things change. I love reflections and windows besides, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, decorations that may be uh, seasonal. And I love uh, deserted streets and foggy situations. For some reason, I don't know. It's uh, I get you know, uh, I love store windows and I love signs and I love reflections and uh, things are topical and timely and then they have a way of changing and then you're recording history in a way. So that's photojournalism, I guess. So this is an excellent camera if you get one cheap. I haven't the faintest idea what they go for. The G15 is 10 years old since this uh, video is uh, being recorded in uh, 20, 
22. Uh, the, these snowy pictures were taken under like 20 degrees. It was 20 degrees out. All right, I had the camera slung around my neck. It was inside my jacket. And I would just pull it out to take a picture and put it back in. But, I mean, the thing didn't die or freeze up or, you know, start acting goofy. So, it's a very rugged and reliable camera. It has a wide dynamic range. So, instead of the, the highlights being blown out or the shadows being black, you could see uh, both, which is amazing. I love uh, reflections. Uh, uh, I love uh, uh, zebra snow. I love sunsets. There's no doubt about it. This camera could do it all. And, uh, you know, uh, you just play with the settings and say, well, sometimes uh, if you want to get a good sunset, you put it on um, a deep shade and that brings out the reds. Or uh, you could put it on a tungsten and that changes the, you know, sometimes you just don't go with automatic white balance. You just uh, play with the settings and see what they do. It's like, wow, that worked out really good. And then you remember that for next time. Uh, Eskimos have like 120 words for snow. And so uh, all I know is I like snow. And it's texturing. These are walls were built by ancient astronauts millions of years ago. I just like the way the snow uh, uh, accentuates the topography of the ground. And here's all these erratics, which is these boulders left in the middle of fields. Some uh, glacier came down thousands of years ago and pushed these boulders down. And then when it, it retreated, it just dropped in there in situ. Or maybe ancient astronauts moved them and left them there using anti-gravity devices. Who knows? Uh, it was really cold this day. And I guess the animals were out looking for seeds and such. I felt sorry for them. And maybe I should have brought a, a couple of seeds, uh, cups of seeds with me and tossed them around. Industrial. Uh, we live in an industrial society. And it uh, sort of uh, blankets uh, the environment. And, of course, I'm an American, so I got an American flag. And, uh, oh, yeah, there's wires all over for uh, the transportation of energy. And they're all over, depending on where you are. And I said, well, i got to go with that. Rather than trying to avoid them, I figured I'd go with it. And this industrial park I, I live in, they have all these uh, flowering cherry trees all over. And so uh, uh, every day I walk around at break time, and it was like going to a park and seeing uh, the trees in bloom. And there are different conditions from bright sun to, uh, you know, uh, heavy overcast. And, of course, they have some uh, white dogwood trees as well, along with the cherry blossoms. And it's pretty cool, the juxtaposition. Uh, these are sun daemons. There's a... Uh, a building behind me and the sun was reflecting off the buildings and making these uh, weird shapes and of course here's uh, some uh, white flowers and some pink flowers and here's a perfect example of a uh, wide open f1.8 of some a uh, uh, building with some uh, flowering trees in front of it this is a flash picture this is a flash picture and of course uh, you have to play with the ISO and the flash compensation you know to get the right exposure I like this picture because not only did it have the, uh, the tree with the flowers, it had a reflection in the window of the flowers. And of course, the hairs go back to some fog, and I love fog. Fog helps you uh, isolate uh, foreground. Uh, oh, here's some more uh, timely uh, uh, gas prices. Oh, if only gas was 3.15, huh? Here's some more zebra snow and a strange exposition of red stop signs. And of course, uh, I work in this neighborhood and I walk around and you can see the different changes through the seasons. I live close to Patterson and Patterson is a scary place. So I only go down there when there's extremes of temperature. Like it's really super cold in uh, January or February. And I drove down one Sunday and I figured all the bad people would be hiding and it worked out pretty good. 
I didn't see anybody around. These uh, uh, satanic mills they got down there and how they uh, cast shadows. And here's our friend's uh, telephone and power lines uh, in front of, uh, uh, you know, background. This is the court building and it has some flags there. And it's an old court building and it's very ornate. And of course they have a new court building. And this is the dome. And I guess that's justice up there or something. I don't know. And they actually have gargoyles on it. So it's pretty cool, but Patterson's a scary place. You never know when you might get accosted or assaulted or maybe even killed. It's that sort of a town. You know, even though it's the county seat and I got all this law enforcement there, it's still a scary place. And people working in these old mills are probably 100 years old or more. And uh, we didn't have too many ice storms this year, which is good. But there was one or two when I got a couple pictures off. It says water. And what is it? It's being... Uh, uh, obliterated or highlighted by snow. Ha 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 ha. I was walking up and down the street and they got these power uh, towers there and they had the glass uh, insulators. Pretty cool. And I live close to a park so I go try to go to the park when there's nice weather. Uh, uh, but not too nice because then it's too crowded. Flocks or mountain pinks. I like them. I got these cheap. I bought a flat for 10 bucks. Now there's like, oh, oh my God, talk about inflation. <laughs> of course, Morristown's an interesting uh, place to go, and there's a lot of quaint shops and everything all over. And they have, uh, you know, street signs, and it rained, and there's water drops on it. And people paint uh, their buildings with weird stripes on it and everything. And it all changes. I mean, somebody, uh, a lot of these stores are empty. I mean, they are empty. So I guess maybe you're going to knock them all down and put up uh, modern stuff. So I figure record it before it's all gone. Here's the three terrorists. I think it's Washington, Madison, and Lafayette, or somebody like that. Some people. And it's interesting that they made them in bronze so they don't look too white, huh? There's a church with some flowers in front of it and flowers painted on the window. I love reflections, especially when it rains and you get these weird juxtapositions of the ground and the reflections. And uh, They plant a bunch of tulips in the, in the green. So uh, I was there and it had all water droplets on it. So of course I snapped a couple of pictures. Century 21 was New York's best kept secret, but I guess it doesn't matter any now because they're gone. So they have some modern cubicle skyscrapers and they refract and defract uh, reflections. And here's a, a flowering tree uh, in the back, in foreground of a building. And here's some urban renewal. There were some stores here and they knocked them down. And I think I could put up a bank or something. And of course, you know, they got a pile of dirt. And I figure, well, it's not going to be there forever. They're eventually going to get rid of it. And all these construction machines, and then it's going to be business as usual, as they say. And you've seen this picture before, if you look at my other videos, you can compare how these cameras uh, compare to each other. Here's some old brick church with a flowering tree in front of it. I'm sure this tree is all green now. And uh, here's the old and the new, renovated old and the ultra-modern. If you look closely, you can see a self-portrait of me in this window. This business is defunct and it must have had something to do with cows, like milk or beef or something. And 489, ooh, that's a little uh, high, but maybe we'll say that's low in a couple of months, huh? So rather than just take a picture of a building, I try to have some foreground in it. And then there's always these buildings uh, on a side street where they're being taken over by uh, uh, the jungle. And of course, this was a bank and it changed names 20 times and here's a shot down the street with some compressed perspective of course there's all these churches and the uh, there's stop signs street uh, so I just leave them there that's all I do just leave them there